Don't get me wrong, I do love my Dexcom G7, but let's be real here, it's not all rainbows and butterflies. The G7 also has some issues. And I think it's just as important to talk about some of the downsides of our diabetes tech, um, because, well, just pretending everything is perfect is kind of a weird way of putting our heads in the sand. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about the five things that I think don't really work when it comes to the Dexcom T7 Plus, some of the things that I think we can do to, well, make the G7 suck a little less. I'm Chris Dell from Diabetes Strong, and I've been low type 1 diabetes since 1997, and I've been wearing Dexcom CGMs for quite a few years now. I started out on the Dexcom T5 and then moved over now to the Dexcom T7. I've been using that since early 2023. And as I said up front in this video, I do love my Dexcom T7. So this is in no way a video meant to trash the Dexcom T7, but rather a discussion of some of the things that I think could be improved. The most annoying and maybe most recognized issue with the Dexcom T7 is the frequent signal loss. So signal loss simply means that your Dexcom CGM, so the sensor that's on your body, loses contact with your phone or your receiver. So you're not getting any blood sugar readings, which is really unfortunate because obviously getting blood sugar readings is the only real reason why we wear a CGM. I've experienced sensor loss with the Dexcom T7 in situations where my previous Dexcom models were just fine. So examples would be having a sensor on my left arm and my receiver or my phone on my right side, having my phone in my purse or even in my back pocket. So Dexcom does recognize that this is an issue and their solutions is simply do not put your phone or receiver the other side of the body as your sensor. Well, I think that's a little silly. In my experience, the signal usually comes back fairly quickly. I've only had a handful of sensors where it was a persistent problem, and usually that would be towards the end of the 10-day sensor lifetime. But regardless of why and when and how long, signal loss is very frustrating. I've seen a few theories float around online on why this is happening, one being that people speculate that the Bluetooth connection isn't as strong as it was in previous models. That sounds about right to me, without me knowing the exact facts on that or being an engineer. According to Dexcom, um, signal loss can have a few different reasons and they also offer some solutions. Of course, you could be in a situation where you're just too far away from your receiver, um, but that would also have been an issue for previous models as all of them require you to be within 20 feet of your receiver. So I guess that's an easy fix. If you leave your phone at home, don't do that, then you'll get lost signal. Other things they also mentioned is that you need to have your Dexcom app open. Makes sense. Um, it doesn't mean that your phone has to be open. You need to be able to see the Dexcom app all the time, but you can't close it down on your phone. Second, they say don't use low power mode, which was a little bit interesting to me because I didn't realize this. So low power mode is when you put your phone uh, in low power mode so that it preserves battery. Apparently that doesn't really work with the Dexcom T7. And then I do appreciate their very low tech solution to signal loss. And that is simply to turn off your device and turn it back on. Very innovative. Yes, signal loss can be super frustrating, but I've also found that a good portion of my Dexcom T7 sensors are super bunkers inaccurate the first 24 hours. So one could debate what is most frustrating, signal loss or bunkers blood sugar readings, but probably bunkers blood sugar readings. All CGMs, regardless of brand and model, could be expected to have some level of inaccuracy the first 24 hours, as the sensor just to the body. At this point, I don't have a side-by-side -side comparison of Dexcom T7 numbers and Dexcom T6 numbers. I am working on that though. So remember to subscribe to my channel if you wanna check out that content. But it's more of a feel right now. It feels like more of my Dexcom T7s are inaccurate than previous models. So there's only really one way of knowing if your sensor is inaccurate and that's by doing a finger stick. So that's what I do, especially those first 24 hours. So I do finger sticks, I do spot checks, and I also really 
try to be in tune with how I feel. So if the Dexcom shows a weird high blood sugar, well, I don't just correct that. I do a finger stick to see if it's actually that high. Same thing with lows. And usually after those first 24 hours, it tends to become accurate enough that I start to trust it and I don't do finger sticks as often. With previous Dexcom models, you could insert the sensor 24 hours or more before you started it, thereby letting the sensor adjust to the body, making it more accurate for those first 24 hours. Um, you can still do that with Dexcom T7. However, once inserted, even if you haven't started in the app, once inserted, the lifetime of the sensor starts. So for me, that's not really worth it. I don't have enough sensors that are wacky that I think it's worth losing 24 hours. Another frustrating thing about Dexcom T7 are the compression lows. So compression low is a fake low blood sugar that you get when you put pressure on the sensor, for example, when you're sleeping. My guess is that a real issue if you wear a Dexcom T7 on your arm, which is what it's FDA approved for. It's only FDA approved for wear on the arm. I don't want to make a side note here. And that is that it's CE marked and it's the same sensor, but it has a CE mark for wear both on the arm as well as on the stomach. So you can obviously do whatever you want with that information. I'm not telling you to go off label, but that's what the CE mark says. And I can tell you that I've been wearing my Dexcom T7 on my stomach most of the summer. And for me, it works really well there, maybe even better than on the arm. So how do you know if it's a false low blood sugar? Well, it's usually fairly easy to see. Often, if you look at your Dexcom graph, you'll see your blood sugar sort of plodding along, maybe in a flat line. And then all of a sudden, bam, you'll get a low blood sugar reading, like urgent low, out of the blue kind of thing, no downward slope, no nothing, just an urgent low. That usually tells you that this is a compression low and it can be problematic. So one thing is being woken up for something in the middle of the night with an urgent low alarm. That can be frustrating. I'd rather sleep than getting false alarms. But it can also be an issue if you don't check your graph and you don't recognize that it's a false low reading and you treat it with glucose, which can lead to high blood sugars later. Another kind of weird issue that can potentially be real problematic is the choppy or even jumpy Dexcom graph. I've come to conclude that the Dexcom T7 self adjusts to blood sugars more frequently, meaning that if it thinks it's inaccurate, it'll make sort of a here and now adjustment, which in theory, it sounds great. We want more accurate sensors, but unfortunately, it can also lead to a bit more unpredictable readings and, well, wrong readings. Let me explain. I'll sometimes see a sharp increase in blood sugars from these self-adjustments, and I have to be really careful not to just blindly react to them, as often the sensor will self-adjust and the blood sugar line will come down to where it was before that jump. And since Dexcom T7 only updates every five minutes, it can be worth waiting 10 minutes plus before reacting to abrupt blood sugar changes. Or of course, I could just do a finger stick to check. As for the historic blood sugar graphs being a little bit more choppy than in previous models, I'm not sure it matters a whole lot. It might not be super aesthetically pleasing, <laughs> but it probably doesn't matter for historic data analysis. The final thing that's kind of a bummer, but probably done deliberately is that the Dexcom T7 cannot be restarted. Yes, you get a 12 hour grace period, which is awesome. But if you're, for example, run out of sensors or you can't afford to buy a new one, unfortunately you cannot restart the Dexcom T7 sensor as you could with the Dexcom T6. I get it from a business perspective. They don't want you to use the sensor longer than it's actually approved for. And there might also be some, heightened risk of infection if you wear it longer than the 10 days. But it's really a bummer because I know that this means that for some people, a CGM, a Dexcom CGM specifically, is just gonna to be too expensive. So what do you think? Do you have anything to add to my short list of things that don't work with Dexcom T7? Or maybe you love it. That's totally cool. I actually plan on doing a video with five things that I love about my Dexcom T7. So regardless, please leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think about the device. And if you like this video, please give it a like below and subscribe to my channel. Remember, turn on notifications. 
that is that little bell that way you'll be informed whenever I post new content. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.